What's up, guys, and welcome back to Carbon Scoring, your home for the very best in action figures and comics history. And we're here with a bonus mystery box episode on the 4th of July. Obviously, there is no mystery as to what's going on in this box. It is a huge box of Captain America figures. And as I have been doing these mystery box videos, I've been trying to reorganize and get my action figures into a little bit better shape. And I even did a top 10 Captain America figures video a couple of months back. I actually really love that video. At the end of this one, why don't you guys check that one out? But for the 4th of July, I thought I would bust out this box that is just full of Captain America figures. So let's dig in, see what we can find, and kind of talk about each one. So where to start? How about right here? Okay, so this is one of the newer Captain America figures that Hasbro did. I can't remember if this was called the Marvel Now Captain America or if one of the other ones was the Marvel Now. It's obviously close to his traditional suit, but, you know, a little bit more updated the wings on his helmet are painted on. He has more of the, you know, kind of the tech gear that soldiers have. He's got the cool boots. And, you know, this is the fine line that Marvel and Hasbro have had to kind of draw. I mean, Captain America's a soldier, right? I mean, he, you know, is America's top soldier. And so sometimes he is presented as more of a superhero. Sometimes, like this one, he's presented as more of a soldier. So yeah, it's a cool figure, good colors. Uh, it's actually a, a really decent Steve Rogers head sculpt. So, all right, good place to start. Let's grab this one. Let's go in a completely different direction. So this, I believe, is the newest kind of gamer version, gamer verse figure. Uh, a lot of people always ask me, hey man, how do you, you know, do all the things that you do? Well, one of those ways is because I don't play video games. I just, you know, do not have time to play video games. So I had never seen this before I got the figure. It's a cool figure. It's, you know, like Iron Man meets Captain America. It's got kind of a cool, funky shield. I like the fact that if you're going to go with an alt version of Captain America, that he has a alt shield to go along with it. So, you know, fun toy. Uh, never going to really probably be on display in any collection I have, but still a super fun toy. Now, this is one of my favorites. So this is World War II Cap. And I want to say this is an early Hasbro figure. Let's see if we can see that. Yep. Yeah, I think that says 2008. So this is when Hasbro kind of first took over the line from Toy Biz. One of the ways that I always can tell is, is the paint apps are still kind of basic. You know, there's not a lot going on on that head sculpt and, and things like this. But again, when we're talking about Captain America as a soldier during World War II, this is what it looks like. You know, he's got a submachine gun. He's got a pistol. He has his packs. He has his original uh, shield, which fascinatingly only lasted one issue in the comics. This shield appeared in the very first issue of Captain America comics, and then they were sued by the comic company that would become Archie because it was a straight ripoff of their character, The Shield. So Cap actually had his Circle Shield by his second issue in the uh, Simon and Kirby days back in the uh, late 30s, early 40s. But he, he obviously has a helmet that's hopefully somewhere down on the bottom of this box. But really cool. This was the design that Brian Hitch came up with during The Ultimates, which was such an incredible comic book. Uh, but his redesign of World War II Captain America was a, an absolute high point for me in that book. Good stuff. All right, let's go here. So here is the exact opposite of that. This is Cap Wolf. Oh, that is just so good. Look at how awesome that that wolf sculpt is. So Mark Grunwald is probably the longest serving writer on Captain America, and he genuinely, truly, truly loved the character. This is a fabulous regular cap body. I mean, a really, really good basic comic cap. It doesn't have all the packets and, and, and ammo belts and stuff. But during Mark Grunwald's run, Captain America uh, turned into a werewolf. And they gave us this as an alternate head for that figure. And how sweet that we actually get to replicate this moment in Marvel Comics history with Cap Wolf. Love it. Love it. Uh, okay, here we go. So, Bucky Barnes as Captain America. 
So this is not a Marvel Legend. This is a, a Diamond Select figure. It's a little bit taller. It's more in the seven inch scale, whereas Marvel Legends are six inch scale. Doesn't have quite the articulation. There's nothing going on here with the abdomen, but it's it's pretty well articulated for a, a Diamond Select figure. What I really like is how good this blue shiny paint job is. They did a nice job in the comics of differentiating, you know, kind of the plain four color Captain America costume with this more metallic look that Bucky Cap has. And again, he sort of, you know, is reminiscent of that original shield design on here, but solid figure. So we have that one. And then we also, they had a variant version that had the Bucky Barnes head. That's a pretty generic head. I mean, if you, if all you saw was that and you said, what character is this? Uh, you'd probably come up with like 15 different names before you said, oh, that's Bucky. But still, another nice figure. Really solid. Really good paint scheme. Really good colors. Good paint scheme on that. Ah, uh, the Captain. So you can take this figure two ways. You can say when Captain America gave up his shield and gave up the identity of being Captain America because he didn't want to solely work for the U.S. government, he took on the identity of the captain. And, you know, I think that's who this is meant to be, but it also is the identity of U.S. agent, you know, of um, the, uh, the, the second, or the John Walker Captain America that came in. And I would argue this is more of a U.S. agent head sculpt because look at how sort of angry that is. That's, that's much more angry than I kind of feel my Steve Rogers to be. So I'm going to call this more of a U.S. agent uh, John Walker sculpt there. Oh, here we go. Here is another Marvel Select. And this is actually one of the earliest ones. Now, this really does look like it came straight out of a Brian Hitch comic book. I, I, I mean, it really, really replicates that art, particularly how good that head sculpt is. Helmet actually comes off, and you can see the leather mask underneath with all the different straps and buckles. That is super, super nice. The only problem is early in the Diamond Select line, not much articulation. I mean, there's literally nothing through here, not even not even twists at the ankle. So he is pre-posed like that with, you know, ball jointed shoulders and his head. But for a miniature seven inch statue, it's pretty daggum good. That's a nice looking figure. I'm gonna save that one. Oh, here's a fun one. Okay, so this is the Mezco 112 edition. So Mezco is doing uh, kind of their own take on characters. This is their take on Captain America. He has this like textured chainmail top. It's actually kind of soft, but it really kind of brings out that chainmail. Uh, a little bit of a different helmet design because you can see it has sort of the chin strap, whereas in the comics, uh, Steve doesn't normally have that going underneath his chin. Great shield. Great, outstanding colors on that shield. But then cloth costumes. So cloth costumes with, you know, plastic boots, lots of accessories, knife right there. Uh, he's got his canteen. So they're, they're kind of higher end figures. Uh, and this one I want to say was like an exclusive, like a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive or something like that. But kind of a really nice combination of, you know, the type of soft goods that you would typically expect to see on a 12 inch figure in the six inch scale. So nice. That's a nice figure. Well, you know, everybody loves World War II cap and I certainly do. Here is another version. This I believe is the one that came with the bike that came uh, with the motorcycle. And I got to do a better job of hanging on to these helmets. Let's see. Okay, so that is not his helmet. That does not fit. So we'll find another guy for that. Uh, goggles are a little bit, they're not see-through like some of the other ones are, but really cool mask. Really cool. I, I like that it's, um, this one's not spandex, right? He's not, you know, classic Captain America wearing spandex. This is, this is like a military suit. I mean, this is, you know, that's, that, that has wool. You know, that has like some heft to it. Like if he was, you know, fighting the Battle of the Bulge in the winter, he could he could survive. And I mean, there's even like a turtleneck type of thing underneath. So that's that's cool because you know here's a here's a different version again of kind of the World War II cap, and I bet that fits better. Yeah, so that fits much better on here. A little bit darker blue, definitely has you know pants on to go with his 
his army boots and a little bit more of a kind of jacket type look up top. Really nice multicolored rifle there uh, and, and reminiscent of the era. You know, that's a, that's a more of a 1940s rifle. That's a good figure. So, so we've gotten, you know, quite a few versions of World War II cap, which is cool. You know, that's pretty sweet that we've gotten to see all those different ones. So let's come back more towards modern times. Here's a couple of more modern caps. This is like cap as like a shield agent. It's got a different uh, shield, you know, shields painted there. He's He wants you, you. Uh, you know, some of these are from storylines that I don't fully remember. I can't remember if this was like leading into the Hydra storyline, which I kind of stopped reading that one. That kind of made me mad. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't completely go there. I know it had a relatively satisfying ending with, you know, Cap not being an agent of Hydra, but too much, too much for me. I like my Cap relatively straightforward. And on the 4th of July, I most assuredly like my Cap straightforward. Speaking of which, here we go. All right. So I know a lot of you guys know this figure and, and for a lot of people's money, this is going to be the definitive Captain America action figure. So this is the Marvel Legends 80th anniversary cap. Great, great colors. Great comic accurate Captain America. Really nice head sculpt with so much detail. Look at how you can see like the seams in his mask uh, here on, on the head sculpt. But then what they really kind of crushed was the chain mail. The fact that Cap is wearing this chainmail armor up top. It's got a great shine to it. I mean, that if you told me, hey, guys, that's the greatest Captain America action figure. We don't ever need another one. I'm not going to argue with you. I actually have some that I like a little bit better, but this is one fine Captain America figure. Very good. Here's one that's a little more toyetic. Again, they take the wings and, and go with just the painted wings. He has more of the modern helmet look with the chin strap. This, while it is trying to do that chainmail thing, looks more like tech armor. See how it's like little octagon pattern? So it's more of a, you know, kind of tech thing, more modern boots. Yeah, not bad, just not really the version of Captain America that I'm familiar with. Shield. Okay, I love this one. We're going to do that one later. Um, oh, and, and that one later too. These two are actually the same. These are the face-off Captain America with the Steve Rogers head sculpt. We're going to look a little bit more in detail in a second in the face-off uh, cap with his normal head. But these came out right at the end of Toy Biz's run on Marvel Legends in 2006. And they, they are just really superior figures. Here is, this guy feels big. So this, I believe, is another Diamond Select, Marvel Select version. Look how big that shield is. It kind of has the the shield super spy look going for it. I do like this one. This one just screams Jack Kirby. So again, this is a Marvel Select. It's not, or Diamond Diamond Select, not a true Marvel Legend. It's seven inches, so it's a little bit bigger, but it's just so Kirby. It is so Kirby in its stylings. It, I, I, there's something just kind of old fashioned about this Captain America. Great job with the chain mail, really nice paint apps, good good body sculpt, decent articulation for a, a, a Diamond Select, Marvel Select, but it's it's that kind of Kirby-esque head sculpt that I really like the best about it. Here's another modern cap. So this was a, a Toy Biz figure. This came out during Toy Biz's time on the line. Pretty cool, different, a little bit of a different design with the, the insignia there. Different, doesn't have his normal red gloves and red boots, has more of the soldier look. This was one of the earlier soldier Captain America figures, and he just, look how mean he looks. Just kind of, as a matter of fact, I think this is meant to represent uh, ultimate Captain America. So this is, whereas we had the World War II version of Brian Hitch's Captain America, this is like the ultimate cap. And he, Ultimate Cap, was definitely not quite the altruistic hero that our 616 Steve Rogers is. And I think that comes across pretty well in this action figure. Hey, there's Sam. Nice. So this is Captain America. This is Sam Wilson, Captain America. Really, really cool. And I just got the MCU 
Sam Wilson, Captain America, and it's remarkable how how true to this costume they stayed in the Disney Plus uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier series. But that's nice, and that is just straight up comic accurate of what what Sam looked like. Here is another, you know, fairly modern. Ooh, I don't like it if you don't have any wings. Uh, that that definitely is. That's one of the things that makes Cap Cap. I'm I'm not a fan when they don't have any wings on there. But I suppose he's uh, going camping with his jacket and whatnot on. Cool. All right, we're down to three. And we're down to three really, really good ones. So we're going to take a look at each one of these. First off, this is the Captain America that we saw the Cap Wolf head. It is a great body for Captain America. I really love that frame. He's muscular, but he's not too big. He doesn't look like Thor. You know, Captain America is supposed to be kind of the perfect human. He's He doesn't have superpowers. He is the ultimate expression of, you know, the human physique. And so I think this really kind of captures that. The head sculpt is a little gruff for me. And I, I, somehow the, the wings just don't quite work as well as I would like for them to. But but that's a that's a solid Captain America figure. Now, I have gone back and forth about this figure being maybe the best. This is the 2006 face-off figure. He's a little bit more muscular. You know, these uh, trapezius muscles back here are are maybe a little bit over the top. Doesn't look quite as bad when you when you pose it that way. But you know, when you hold him down, this cap has probably the best color blue of any figure that. Uh, that's my wife turning on the vacuum cleaner. Um, no rest around here. Uh, so this cap has such an incredible blue color, and I do really, really like that head sculpt. I mean, that is strong. A lot of detail. Really, a lot of great paint applications. Look how realistic that face looks. That's, that's I think, what takes this one over the top. You know, it's kind of the combination, because he has all of the elements of comic cap. Red gloves red boots, but he still has the more tech, the more, you know, modern army belt going on. Perfect shield, really great colors, but that is just a fantastic Captain America head sculpt. So face off Captain America. And then I saved my favorite for last. And this, this is my spare, but this is the very first, I consider this to be the very first Marvel Legends action figure uh, in the proper line. So this is the Captain America from 2002. You can see we've come a long way with the bodies. I mean, this waist is funky. It kind of covers up his stripes. The plastic is fading on his pelvic joint. The hips are kind of wonky, but they, you know, they stick out. The gauntlets and the boots are fantastic, but the thing that makes the difference for me is that head sculpt. That is the most perfect out of all of these Captain America figures that we've seen. That is the most perfect Captain America head sculpt. This is my backup, and so you can see his little uh, winglet there has, has broken off, but I do just absolutely love this now almost 20-year-old action figure. But, you know, they kind of did it right the first time with Captain America. So, everybody, I hope that you're having a happy 4th of July, whether you're in the U.S. or you're one of my many fans that's outside of the U.S. Captain America stands not for American politicians. He doesn't stand for Republicans or for Democrats. He stands for the ideal. He stands for the idea that America represents, the opportunity to be free, the opportunity for your dreams to come true. He stands for it for people of all colors, all races, all orientations, all backgrounds. And because of that, he is absolutely one of my favorite comic book heroes. So happy 4th of July, everybody. We'll see you soon on Carbon Scoring.